Welcome to Queen Tech Gang Show. I remain your girl, Mujistola Bashona. Today we'll be discussing the impact of the press in final print production. I have a guest with me today, a press guru, the one who can throw more light into what the press is all about and how to get the best out of the press. Also with me, is my forever partner. Ah. Please allow them to introduce <laughs> themselves. Hello, viewers. Hello, guys. I still remain your one and only AVZ Vitalis, um, a regular face on the show. Thank you, Vitalis. And to my own able guest. Hello, viewers. Um, thank you for having me on this show. My name is Olushemu Salaho. Um, manager CPK Press Limited. Um, I stand as a pre press instructor. We are glad to have you on this welcome, program. Welcome, welcome. Okay, like we Thank said, you. the topic of discussion today is the importance of pre press on final print production. The people in the print committee. Here is Pupres, Pupres. In fact, Pupres is a general language. You can't say anything that has to do with print without you mentioning Pupres. Be it paper print, um, textile print, apparel, screen printing, and all that. There are things that you need to do before the press. And that is what we refer to Pupres. In fact, in my own knowledge, I think Pupres actually start from the graphics. How, what is this going to be used for? Is it going to be a web um, um, production? Is it going to be printed on paper? What kind of paper is it going to go for? Is it going to be printed on textile and all that? So if you ask me, I'll say quickly start from designing, from graphics. So, you know, vitally to you, what is prepress? What we say prepress? What do we mean by prepress? Prepress is um, those processes that you do, those work that you do before going into the press, taking the job to the press. Because um, for a job to be done properly, for you to have a good output, some lines and check-ins and everything needs to be done on the uh, work on the job that has already been designed. Because as Moji said, you start the prepress work from your design. So when the designer misses one or two things or puts too much transparency uh, um, during the design, it also affects the final output. So those are the things you check during the prepress work before it gets to the press. Thank you, Vitalis. And now to my prepress girl, Mr. Shagun, in your own perspective, we've been hearing prepress, prepress, prepress. What? is really difficult. Talking about prepress, I think I would like to start by um, bringing our attention to qualities of materials being used in the prepress. Number one, materials being used in the prepress, I will say it's photography. Photography is much more um, important in the prepress. Reason being that even if even before going into um, graphic design, you must have gotten your materials for your designs. Yeah. And um, I have discovered one thing, I would say in our country, Nigeria, is that our attention to photography is not too um, standardized. We feel we can reason use reason being that we go, um, for us to have any design, most time we go on the internet yeah. to get a pixelated pictures yeah and yeah. then we go ahead with our designs because we're not really ready to, to pay, pay for, it. <laughs> yes. for this picture and this is because most of the pictures on the internet which um, we were to well. buy uh, but we we like by cutting <laughs> uh, you know and that is why people will just go on the internet and um, download a pixelated images and we go ahead with the designs. Even the raw materials, that is the pictures, our own pictures as well, we don't really take time to do a studio work yeah. of having a quality picture before yeah. going for the design. So 
Now talking about preppers. Preppers is a place where jobs are being prepared, jobs are being uh, laid out for the press. It's a process that must be followed with serious attention because if anything is missing in the preppers and it goes to the press, before you know it, it causes big errors that we have to reprint and um, the cost of um, materials nowadays you, you, sh you shouldn't leave, give any room for, for any errors. errors. Yeah. Because yeah. it's a very expensive um, um, so error. That's where the slang of you know. a, 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 or a printer's devil or whatever, whatever comes in for. So um, that, that's why I will say prepress um, starts from um, getting uh, materials to be used in the studio probably by um, starting with the designs then after the designs another thing that is much much important is getting a final approval and after a design sure there should be um room for proofreading yeah so and once um you have your um designed um matters being proofreaded then you you can do your lanes and um even after your lanes there's something um in purpose too which we usually do and it is still part of the processes and that is having your pre um, proof print okay then also having a dummy okay. and that that dummy guides you in um doing in knowing um, the right planning it guides you in knowing if you have done the right planning okay. for the pre for the press okay. before um, outputting your plate. Okay, so that is for book production, right? For yes. the either for book, you... book productions or magazines, magazines and yeah, so on. Or newspaper. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Shagun, for that um, enlightenment on what pre press entails. The next question that I would like to ask is. What is yeah. entail in quality proposal? What Top what are this checklist that you would check for you to know that wow now the purpose work on this particular um job or order is done optimally and is when you dot the high hand cross the T. Yeah, talking about what it entails in um quality purpose work. I will have to start by letting us understand the fact that the software that is being used also determines the kind of quality. Just for an example, I could remember then when my MD invested on a, a particular software, which is called Sublima, and um, also a GMG. Mm -hmm. The GMG has a um, series of uh, usages, and that is with uh, optimization in the software, you can reduce the quantity of links wow. to be used when yes. the um, the plate gets to the press. Reason being that while applying the software, there is there is a folder that is created for the uh, for for the files. And if you really want to make use of the optimization, it means that you drop the file into the optimization folder. And what this does is that. It reduces virtually all the colors, that is um, the same white, the cyan, magenta, yellow, and the black. And in fact, most time it takes off the um, the black color and reduces everything to three colors, which is um, cyan, magenta, and yellow. Mm. So, and you still have the same output with even when it is being dropped in the standard um, folder, which um, standardizes and also rasterizes um, the images. Because in purpose, at times, we, we lose focus and lose um, attention by dropping some files into the rip. And before you know it, some images disappear. And once and um, to avoid such um, occurrences, that is when this um, software of um, 
GMG is needed. What the software does is, by the time you drop the, uh, the file into the folder, uh -huh. it rasterizes the images and also um, keeps the, um, the vector objects intact. So, and by so doing, you have um, taken your time to avoid issues that 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 is unforeseen unforeseen errors that might occur even in in the press while okay. printing so i think that, so that I've, is I've heard you, one of the ways i've heard you mention rasterized and all that can you please just throw a bit light on what do you mean by rasterized for a layman that doesn't even understand anything about print but just you know have an interest in this uh show for him or she to pick one or two knowledge when you talk of rasterize what does that mean yeah um rasterization is a means of um flattening that is flattening images okay that was why i, I also explained further that when a file is being dropped into all these folders created in a GMG software. Uh -huh. What it does is it flattens the images so that there wouldn't be any so that nothing error, be missing. So that there wouldn't be pictures. anything missing in the production okay. while um, the um, while the plate is out and the plate is being taken to the press. All right, thank you so, very much, Mr. Shrego. Thank you welcome. for that deep knowledge. Mr. Ibizin, we've talked about rasterization and all that vector. He mentioned vector. I'm here to learn. I have understand what rasterize is from here. Can you please just throw a bit of light on vector? What do you mean by vector? In printing, machine understands what you call either a vector or a, a bit, raster bitmap. or bitmap. Vectors are made up of lines, solid lines that you see while bitmap and uh, rasters are the pixels that makes up an image. To understand vector better, you just look at CorelDRAW and Photoshop. Photoshop gives you bitmap, while yeah. CorelDRAW gives you more of lines. It's not like it can't do Photoshop work, except you add a picture to it, you can accept it. But what, what, what I'm going with this is that vector is your lines and your shapes that are solid. They have points and anchors to okay. it. To, uh, that means you can edit, you can edit the components of it. Mm. Meanwhile, for the um, bitmap or bit of uh, oh, right. raster, it's, one, it's seen as one solid shape. I hope you have your notes and you're taking down those words because they might be used for one day. Thank you very much, Mr. Vitalis. Now, the next um, question is, we've all said this, and um, now let's talk about what is needed to standardize pre-press. What are these things you put in place? You talked about the software, um, software the, all yeah. the time. Is it all about software? Or there are other things that you manually input to make sure that the pre-press work is done properly. Talking about what is needed to standardize a pre-press, number one thing we need is, of course, getting our workstation in a very good shape by having a, uh, a modern systems to have the capacity to take as much as possible softwares like um correct draw like um indesign like um illustrator which is the adobe um, package, you know and um as well a photoshop um, for your uh, picture editing and uh, rest of that and another thing that is important in a prepress is that um, as the technology is um, advancing, a pre-press outfit must be able to um, upgrade the um, equipment, be it oh. um, a CTP uh, or, or whatever 
um, equipment is being used. But oh. I think for a purpose, a, C a CTP is actually needed. I can say with confidence when we talk of um, CTPs, um, we um, we have um, different types of the CTP. We have thermal, we have um, the violet, and we have different make of, makes of the CTP. But in my own office, I've actually been convinced with the type with the CTP I use, which mm. uh, which is Alpha CTP, I will say, and um, this is a CTP that is um, much much um friendly in using okay. and when when we talk of um, durability this is a this is an equipment that i think is very very durable and um so far so good we we barely have downtime oh. we're going to charge you for that advert on hacks i remind me to send you an invoice <laughs> after the <laughs> After this show, but anyway, thank you very much. That was in that. Um, Vitalis, do you have any words to add to what Mr. Shagun has said concerning? Mm, uh, yeah, uh, for a proper prepared to function properly or uh, to be sanitized, the, the uh, other things like the um, optimal because you have a linearization system. What a linearization system is all about is it's like what he said the software does it optimizes your file the kind of file you have the way you output it does your pre-flight checking what the uh, what is missing the font that is used is available and whether it is good for you whether it is um, there is transparency in the file and all that whether the image is rasterized or not. It does that also um, you have that linearization done so that a particular curve is generated what that curve does is when they take it to the press it reduces the amount of ink you use and it optimizes the um, the final output and this all this is uh, is you need to do it with um, I want there are tools like I one uh, tool which measures the intensity yes of the uh, colors in the printout. Then also definitely he mentioned something about a proof. You need to have something high quality that you can use to print out your proof because you before you send to the final output uh, to send to press, you need to see what you are about to send to the press. You need to see if if this happens, goes to the press, would it come out the way it was intended Yeah, talking for. about proof, I've seen a situation where you have your proof, but the end result um, of the print um, production so different. is different from what you present as a proof. The proof was supposed to be a guide, right? I would have to chip in this, in the, in the area of um, having proof or not. Because um, proof is another thing that is much more important when um, we're trying to um, standardize the prepress because um, prepress um, um, the um, what is it the proof itself should um, like in my press what we we've been able to do is we we have been able to synchronize mm. our proof with the press yes and you, cal you calibrate both of them together. How have we been able to achieve this? Is number one step is the uh, area of um, linearization, which um, uh, Vital has just mentioned. And having to linearize plate has to do with the type of um, the CTP equipment mm. being used. The linearization do only does um, one thing. And that is having accuracy yes. on your density. Mm. And that is when I want to is being used to, to measure, measure, the, measure. Um, density. And another thing too that um, that is also being applied is um, calibration curve. Yes. And um, this issue of um, calibration curve is something that is much more important. And that is um, and in fact, I would say that is basically 
the um, the quality impact mm. on the press is that um, even when you have the old presses, you can use your calibration curve to compensate the old presses, mm. and it will print to the expected standard. That is the expected inter international standard, which is ISO. Well, one, two, six, four. Mm. Are you getting it? <laughs> <laughs> Guys, like I said, I hope you still keep your notebook with you. Can you imagine that? Some of us don't even understand what color codes are. Thank you very much, Mr. Shegu. I enjoy having you on the show. But we're not done yet. Yoga will say, Okay, the next question I want to ask you is, investors as much as they like making money they want to make profit but some of them don't like investing what should an investor invest in when it comes to purpose i know purpose is the human the mission. equipment the mission so what should an investor invest in to have a good Request. Let's let's have an idea from the human point of view. The equipment you've talked about, um, a brand which I am still going to charge you for. What kind of investments? Yeah, when we talk of um, an investor investing on on prepress. Yeah. Yeah, I I will sp split it in two ways, just like um, Moji said in human and also in um, equipment. In human, um, I think the investors should, should endeavor to see how probably one, two or more of the staff can be sent for training. Yeah, training is key. Yeah, training is key in, um, in having a standard um, prepress. Another thing is, we, an investor, should be able to follow the trends oh. of the technology. That is the um, improvements, Innovation. the advance yeah. in um, technology. So, and by sending probably a staff to and for training, I think um, the prepress can uh, the the whoever is being sent for the training will come back and also impact the the new knowledge or the new um, way of um, advancing or probably standardizing the purpose. Then in um, equipment, just like I said earlier on, is that um, the investor should be ready to upgrade the equipment mm -hmm. to a newer version. So in At other words, in um, any kind of equipment you're trying to get, make sure it's the one that is upgradable. Yes. All right. Thank you. Um, Vitalis, what is your take on this? The, the training is not just uh, any other training. You have to train the person to, first of all, you have to get someone that is trainable and that's okay. able to upgrade him or herself. Oh. That is trainable, one. Two, Train on the softwares that are in use, and also, as he said, look out for improvements, innovations in the uh, industry. Because at the end of the day, you need to grow with the industry. Because the industry, a dropper every four years, you have um, new innovations, and if you don't follow it up, you have issues. Mm -hmm. You will be still be left with. Because I remember when I start, I, I joined the, the printing industry, they were still doing CTFs. Mm -hmm. They were using a computer to film to do lithography to expose their plates. But now you have uh, CTPs direct to plate, direct to plate, computer to plate, and that's a huge leap in the technology. Tomorrow there might be a new technology which. We don't know of yet, but you have to know which one is on ground, which one is in vogue, which one is going. Then um, also, 
avail yourself the opportunities to go for exhibitions, go to, go to expos and um, learn those things. Today has been so wonderful. And uh, I really don't want to go. I wish we can actually spend more time, but sorry, we have to go. So another way of saying advice, is there any advice you want to give to the younger ones out there that wants to have, um, that want to be equipped professionals? Um, my advice to the younger ones out there and um, preparers um, personnel is that um, when it comes to preparers, preparers needs just two things. And those two things are paying attention to details. And secondly, is being well organized. And mm. that is the only way you can be a, prof a professional preparers man. Mm. You had Thank it. You. you had it all. You need to be focused and you need to be well organized. Quick press is not something you just you just want to dabble into. It takes your will, it takes your focus, it takes you just have to be intentional about it. Calmness. You need to know what you're in for and go for it. Vitally is what is the advice to those young ones out there that want to be like, oh, I want to be like my terms. Yeah, um, for the for the you viewers out there, both the young and the old, the new that wants to join the uh, prepress uh, team, it's all about what you can offer. Mm -hmm. As he said, you have to be focused, you have to be organized, and also you have to be teachable, you have to, be, you have to also research on your own, learn how to use the softwares available. There, you have your YouTube, go to YouTube, teach yourself, mm -hmm. learn how to upgrade yourself from the level which you are to level of what else you can do. Go to YouTube, learn from there. There are a lot of tutorials out there that you can learn from and upgrade yourself to make yourself better and impact better in the prepressed world. Thank you. Now, you don't have to wait for the organization to send you for training. There's something we call self-development. Be intentional about this. Don't just use the internet as just the internet. It is there to educate you, to equip you. So make good use of your YouTube, learn a few tricks, and plan accordingly. Till we we'll meet again, I remain your girl, Ojisola Bashon. Remember to comment, like, subscribe. Thank you. See ya.